Our wonderful people with an extraordinary touch of classified personality. We greet you now, Flinty Flinty. Welcome to another episode of Tapo TV. We are happy you joined us. Hope your week was good. I saw a video online which actually was turned to comedy where a particular guy was trying to convince this other guy to vote for Tinubu because, according to him, Tinubu was the one that built Lagos. So those set of people will tell you that Tinubu has built Lagos and is coming to build Nigeria. That's why you should vote for him. Abina, the Jagaban of Lagos is becoming the Jagaban of Nigeria, they say. Tinubu built Lagos? How? Many of these people claiming Tinubu built Lagos don't live in Lagos. Even if they do now, they were not in Lagos at the same time when Tinubu built Lagos as claimed. Let's set some records straight. That means you should take your pen and paper and write down these key notes. First off, before Tinubu came to power, all the infrastructures you see in Lagos were already in place. It was Fashola that cleaned up Lagos and knew Lagos was dirty. Many people will claim that it was Tinubu that laid out the plan for Fashola to come and execute. Now let me ask you this question. How many years did Tinubu spend in office? Eight complete years. Okay. How many years did Fashola spend in office? The same eight years with Tinubu now. All right. So how comes Tinubu did not execute the acclaim laid out plans in his own eight years and it was Fashola that had to come and execute those plans? What was he doing with the revenue generated while he was in office? And Lagos is the highest revenue generating state in Nigeria. They will tell you Obasanjo was the one in power and was playing opposition with Lagos state. Now, Lagos was very dirty. That is what the history was. And the area boys took advantage of every hideout, including under bridges. So Fashola set up Lauma, Lagos Waste Management Authority, to clean up the city. They also set up Kai, that is kick against indiscipline, to monitor and enforce environmental law. Then the federal government, who was the opposition then, granted them the power to set up a special police force called Aru Aru S, which stands for Rapid Response Squad, to fight insecurity in the state. But today, the Buhari government is not allowing any governor to set up police to govern their own state because of insecurity. You can see that they know what they are doing in this Nigeria. Of course, they know what is going on. Was it not Governor Wiki who tried to set up a neighborhood watch to secure River State? Buratai sent the military to arrest them and terminate that effort. You think the federal government care about the security of Nigeria? That is not my problem. Let's fit Tinubu matter today. Now let's recall history. Number one, Lagos was the capital of Nigeria after we got independence in 1960 till 1991 when the capital was then moved to Abuja. No wonder every company has their headquarters in Lagos. Exactly. So, for instance, Ted Menland Bridge was built by Shehu Chagari in 1980 till the completion was done by Babangida in 1990. The bridge is 11.8 kilometers long. The people who built this bridge did not put any toll gate on it to collect money. TBS Tafawa Balewa Square was built in 1972. Murutala Mohamed International Airport, Lagos, was built in the 70s. National Theatre Igomu was built in the 70s as well. The National Stadium Lagos was built by General Yakubu Gowon in 1972. Many of these structures were built when Lagos was the capital of Nigeria and money was pumped into Lagos to build these infrastructures just like they are pumping money into Abuja today to build it when Abuja itself cannot generate anything comparable to the money spent on it. That's because it is the capital now. No wonder. See the second Niger Bridge now. Till today they have not finished building it. Assuming it was in Abuja now, they would have finished it today. Exactly. That was why all these infrastructures were built. Now, Tinubu became governor of Lagos State in 1999 and handed over to Fashola in 2007. So how exactly did Tinubu build Lagos? Abi, he stole from Lagos State. So know your mathematics now. Fashola cleaned Lagos and repaired some bad roads. He was not the one that built Lagos. If you want to argue too much, you now say Tinubu laid down the plans for him. I even hate that sound of praise when they say a governor repaired or built the road. Is that not their jobs in the first place? Is it not the state money you are using? Is it your father's money? Then talking about laying plan. If you want to give credit, it should be Fashola that will take all the credit, not Tinubu. 
President Yaradua laid down plans to transform Nigeria. That was called Vision 2020. Go and find out about Yaradua's Vision 2020 for Nigeria. That vision was to move Nigeria out of third world country. Has the laid down plan been executed? Talking about laying down plans, you think it is easy to execute laid down plans? Give credit to who did the job, not who did the theory. After all, theory, you know, they always go well, last, last. All the businesses that used to fail, you think the owners believe that the business will ever fail? For we are. They will give you a theoretical breakdown of how the business will make money, eh? Ah, you will even go and borrow money to come and invest. Some time ago, I was praising the governor of your state, Sheima Kinde, for the good job he has been doing. And some guy came to the comment section and commented that all the road he is constructing was laid down by the former governor, Ajimobi. What did Ajimobi did in his own eight years that he did not execute these plans and waited till someone else came into power to execute the plans? So for a good eight years, he was just laying down plans. Is that how government is supposed to be run? They will steal all the money now. Then they will tell you they have laid down plans for the next person. For one man people. Nigeria that even the project that they already started, by the time the next administration come in, they will abandon it and start fresh one. Can't you see abandoned government projects everywhere? When they asked Tinubu campaign organizers and supporters where Tinubu got all the billions that he has from, they will tell you it is not the main issue. Let's forget about these distractive questions. It's a lie. That's our main issue. Our main issues are thieves in power who have been stealing all our phones that was meant to build Nigeria and stash it up in their personal accounts. And you say that is not our main issue? It is our main issue. If you cannot tell us where you got your billions from then, obviously we are about to vote in a criminal that will come into power and continue to sweep us clean and mount debt upon debt upon Nigeria. But as usual, those benefiting from the system will even die on top of the matter to stand for those politicians. Many youths fighting for these politicians don't even know 5% of whom these people really are. They just hear what people say and they run along with it. I've lived in Lagos from 2002. I'm sure anyone that is a teenager now was not born then. That is 20 years ago. I was there when Funcho Williams was assassinated in his Ikoi home because he was gearing up to take over power from Tinubu and they knew that he would. I was there when Tinubu promised Lagosians Fort Mainland Bridge if they voted for them. I was there when they started expanding the Lekki Ekpe Expressway from two lanes to three lanes and claimed that it was the money that was supposed to be used to build the Fort Mainland Bridge that was used to expand the road. I was also there when all of a sudden two toll gates were mounted on that same road that they claimed was being built with the funds that was meant for Fort Mainland Bridge. We were then told that LCC, Lekki Concession Company, was now the one expanding the road and they are using the toll gate to recover their funds. So if you are living in Ajax Aziz, while you are paying tax that covers road, you are still paying to pass on the road that your tax money is covering. That is double taxation now. Huh? In fact, Seth, if you pass there 50 times a day, you will pay 50 times. Try! I was there when Lekki Koyi Link Bridge was being constructed with Lagos State funds and it also has a toll gate on it. So all of a sudden, Fort Mainland Bridge disappeared from the equation. You people are not good mathematicians now. Nah? If they leave the Fort Mainland Bridge in the equation, it will be too difficult for you to solve. That is why they remove it. As if we are fools. As if we have lost memory. As if we started developing dementia like them. So many of you are fighting for Tinubu and other politicians. Please get to know whom you are fighting for. That was how some were fighting for Buhari in 2015. Even some so-called men of God were saying that there is nobody God cannot use. No, you are wrong. There are people God cannot use. Even in the Bible, David that God called a man after my own heart. He told him, you cannot build a temple for me because your hands are soaked with blood. Because of the many wars that he took part in. There are people God cannot use. Was it not Buhari that said in 2011 that they would see more bloodshed if he did not win the next election when they were killing people in the north because he did not win election? So how do you think that that kind of person will value human life? So you can see why insecurity is on red alert in Nigeria and they live as if nothing is happening. All this issue we are laying out, the records are there. Go and dig. Investigate about these people you are supporting before you jump into the ring to fight for them blindly. Don't fight a blind fight too. Make them no punch you for eye. You know they say that they punch the eyewitness for eye and they cannot report what is eyewitness again. 
Because of the heavy presence of industry in Lagos due to all these factors we've enumerated, it is the highest revenue generating state in Nigeria, besides federal allocation. Go into the interiors of Lagos apart from mainland, go into newly developing areas that started developing from 2000, not recently or from the year 2000, more than 10 years ago, like Aja, Shangotedo, Lakwe, even some areas in mainland. The government hardly construct new roads, except they have something to benefit from that very area. I visited Ebonyi state last December and I appreciated the governor a lot because Ebonyi has no revenue to generate. Okay, but see the way the man has built road network all over the state and beautified the place. The same allocation that has been given to other states that some are owing salaries is the same allocation that this person has executed very well. But the man has decamped to APC. When you see all these governors decamping, they are not decamping because the party they are going into is better than their previous party. It is just for selfish interest. They may give you reasons that are very impressive, but it's a lie. Check all of them. They don't decamp during their first tenure in office. So it's during their second tenure when they know that they have used that very party to win election. Then they will now decamp to the ruling party so that they can get political appointment when they leave office. You know it's only in Nigeria and some other African countries that political office holders are no longer employable when they leave office. They have stolen too much now and they have done bad bad things that on normal circumstances nobody will give them anything to handle except political appointment from their own parties. You see that? Trust me, if a new party comes into power, more than 50% of the people that are telling you APC is the best party today, they will decamp to that new ruling party. Is that not what is going on in APC? All the thieves that were in PDP now have all moved to APC, plus the ones that APC itself had. That is why the full meaning of APC is all past criminals. Yes. Take for instance, Chris Ngige, that is the Minister of Labor. When he was the governor of Anambra State, for years, salaries were not paid. Till he left office, all he did was to embezzle funds. It was his successor that paid off most of his debts. But today he has been appointed a minister in APC government. Is it Amechi you want to talk about? Or God will acquire you? There are many. All these people were in PDP and right now they are in APC. Tomorrow if there is a new party, they will also move to that new party. If you are not a registered member of any political party in Nigeria, you should not be talking about our party or my party. Vote wisely. Exactly. Political parties are not football clubs. You can't be a fan to a party. You should rather support an individual instead of a party. In past elections, I voted different parties. I can vote party A for presidency. Then I vote party C for house of rep. Then I will vote party M for local government chairman. I'm supporting individuals, not a party. So if a party decides to bring a candidate that you know that will not perform or will continue the looting and stealing, you just vote for him just because it's the party you are standing for, Abby. We have to change that mindset if we have any iota for a better Nigeria. Please, we are not changing your opinion about anyone. We are just putting this fact out there so that you can make your findings before you decide to support whomever you choose to support. Till we turn your way again next weekend, please try for a better Nigeria, not a better party. No party can ever make Nigeria better. It is the right leader that will do that. Not the tips they give you during campaign. They can buy your vote with 10,000 naira and steal 10 trillion naira from you thereafter. See you again next Saturday. Potia! Oh,